Well, a federal appellate court dealt a blow to the DeSantis administration this week by finding that one of the Republican governor's signature laws, the Individual Freedom Act, also known as the Stop Woke Act, infringes on the free speech rights of employers. The law was intended to prevent teachings or mandatory workplace activities that suggest that a person is privileged or oppressed based on their race, color, sex, or national origin. A judge with the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals in Atlanta, appointed by former President Trump, wrote the decision, saying in part, the ideas targeted in Florida's Individual Freedom Act are embraced in some communities and despised in others. By limiting its restrictions to a list of ideas designated as offensive and by barring only speech that endorses any of those ideas, it penalizes certain viewpoints, the greatest First Amendment sin. The challenge to the the Stop Woke Act was brought by two Bay Area employers. Honeyfun.com, an online wedding registry website in Clearwater, argued that the law would prevent it from holding an employee seminar about women's advancement in business and institutional racism. And Primo, a franchise of Ben & Jerry's ice cream with stores in Clearwater and Tampa, argued that it would be prevented from teaching employees about systemic racism, oppression, and intersectionality. Governor DeSantis's office issued a statement criticizing the court decision, saying yesterday the United States Court of Appeals for the 11th Circuit held that companies have a right to indoctrinate their employees with racist and discriminatory ideologies. The state of Florida should have every right to protect Floridians from racially hostile workplaces. We are reviewing all options on appeal going forward. So, Maya, there are many aspects to the Stop Woke Act. This is just one part of it, and there's a lot of other laws that address what the governor wants to do with wokeism. With the, with the appellate court being a conservative court there right. in Atlanta, what do you make of this decision? Does this put other aspects of Stop Woke in peril. Absolutely. You know, it's been really interesting to see laws like this come out of the legislature, especially when a lot of folks, especially Democrats, argued that it was unconstitutional at its inception. The fact that the governor's administration is continuing to pursue this, I think, is a waste of taxpayer dollars, and it's more about his ego and pride maybe than actually arguing its legality. Jeff, what, what do you make of the uh, this decision by the court, uh, and does it put other aspects of Stop Woke in peril? I absolutely think it puts other aspects in peril, and I think they probably they, they made the right decision. I think it'll largely be help, upheld by the U.S. Supreme Court if it actually gets there. I think ultimately, look, people have the right to free speech, and yet the, the legislature consistently tries to attack that issue, uh, whether that be in books or in in word. Uh, ultimately, you know, the court has said you have the right to free speech. Period, and that's where I think they've drawn a good line. Do you think wokeism, as the governor describes it, is a problem? Do I think it's a problem? I think I think. Look, people get to, to live their life in America and have their own perspectives. I'm not going to agree with a lot of people's perspective. I'm not sure that me not agreeing with them is a problem. Yeah. Spoken like a true libertarian. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Patrick, what do, what do you make of this appellate court decision? And, and, and do you agree with Maya? I mean, should the governor continue to defend these laws in, in, yeah. in the courts? Of course he shouldn't. Uh, we should uh, uh, worry about the things that are important in this state. We should worry about uh, insurance for homeowners. We should worry about uh, good schools. And, and these distractions are, are just been part of his overall uh, leadership as governor, and, and it's bad. Um, you know, and I also remember a Republican Party that didn't want to get in the middle of business. They didn't want to regulate business, and yet all of a sudden here, you know, they want to start to regulate business, not let them do things. And, and it's just really odd. It's an odd fit for the Republican Party. Normally, they, they don't want to get involved in how business conducts itself. Hmm. Tom, this was the brand that the governor took out of state to places like Iowa and New Hampshire and said, Florida is the place where woke comes to die, and he was campaigning as, for president on that issue. What does it do to his future aspirations if this was the main thing about, you know, how he wanted to run for higher office? Well, I think the governor knows who he's messaging to, and the people that believe in this legislation are going to continue to believe it and appreciate that he's fighting for it. And, and frankly, his future probably runs through a Republican primary in the future. and so. Uh, I don't think it hurts him. I, the courts have held that government can regulate conduct, but they can't regulate speech. And in, in the, the government's lawyers tried to conflate those two things. The court wasn't buying it. And you know, frankly, the the uh, when it all, you know, when all is said and done, uh, the court just ruled that even if the government is right about the ideas it espouses, it can't put its thumb on the scale. And that's the importance of an independent and objective court system in this performative politics era in which we live today. Okay.